Hi everyone, uh, I am Zubhajyoti Ghosh and today I'll be talking about quantifying influence based on economic data and development of a user interface. My presentation will be divided into two parts. The first part will be the public perception of China in different African and Asian countries. And the second part will be analyzing different socioeconomic factors like BRI investment, land acquisition, and export import, etc. So for the public perception uh, of China, we uh, analyzed different data from Afro Biomedia data set and the Asian Biomedia data set. So the African Biomedia data set covered around 34 countries in uh, Africa, while the Asian Biomedia data set covered around 14 countries in Asia. So this picture shows the uh, public perception of China in different African countries. And uh, the color coding is based on which country is uh, perceived to be the most influential in, in their corresponding region. For example, Algeria, uh, in Algeria, most of the people believe that uh, UK is the most influential in their country, while in Namibia, most people believe that China is the most influential there. As you can see that the, most of the North, Northern African countries have uh, UK as the most influential, while the, most of the Southern uh, countries in Southern Africa believe that China is the most influential. So uh, next, the, this is a similar map for Asia. So the Asian Biomedia data, data, data set uh, conduct a service, multiple surveys, out of which Two surveys had questions on international relations, like asking people which country is the most influential in the region, etc. The two surveys were Wave 3 and Wave 4. In uh, the, this picture shows the Wave 3 survey, where you can see that uh, there is a mixture of uh, China and US. They are being voted as the most influential in their corresponding countries. However, in Wave 4, most of the countries have voted China to be the most influential. There are some exceptions being Cambodia, Philippines, and Myanmar. So we can see that uh, with time, the China is becoming to be perceived as more, in, more most influential in the in Southeast Asia than any other country. In this slide, we will have a more uh, granular picture of public perception in Asia. So what we did here, we uh, divided the 14 countries into two sectors. The one is the BRI country, where the BRI investment has occurred, and the other is non-BRI countries. So for example, in Cambodia, we see that uh, around 25% of people think that China is the most influential uh, country in their region, while around 45% think that US is the most influential. In the next slide, we'll talk about the uh, question that which country, the people are asked that which country should be a model for their uh, own country. So the model for economic development for their own country. And uh, here we saw that uh, Almost none of the uh, none of the countries in fact believe that China to be a model for the future development of the country. Most uh, most of the countries believe that US or Japan should be a model for the future development. For example, in Philippines, around 67% people think that uh, the US should be a model for their future economic development. Uh, while in uh, Indonesia, say around 25% uh, people believe that uh, Japan should be the model for future development. Uh, we did case studies. Uh, we did case study for several countries. So today I'm only going to show Malaysia. So in the Asian Biometric data set, the, all of the countries were divided into regions. Uh, the, uh, Malaysia was divided into five regions in particular, the Northern, Eastern, Central, Southern, and East Malaysia. So here is an overview of the map of Malaysia being divided into five regions. So uh, what we did in the uh, here was we selected several features. So by features, I mean that the questionnaire involved many questions that uh, indicated the uh, people's perception uh, on those particular features. And they are, uh, we can think of them as uh, deciding factors behind their perception of which country is the strongest in their corresponding region. So what we did, we selected several features, more and most important features for each of this region to see the regional diversity in the uh, uh, features that are affecting people's perception of China, of, uh, of the strongest influencer in their region. So in the, uh, we can see that in the northern uh, sector, we got uh, features like rural, urban, interest in politics, free speech, etc. While in the southern region, we saw like autocracy, trust in governments, willingness to leave their country, safety as uh, important features that were deciding factors behind the people's perception. Uh, so any question here? Uh, yeah, I just wonder, I mean, what methods did you use to come up with this list of influential factors? Yeah, so uh, that's a very good question. So what uh, we uh, did is we uh, used a three-part uh, method. In the first part, uh, I applied lasso to the entire country to initially select some features. 
and then in the second part i, I uh, con con considered the only the regions separately and each of the regions i applied adapt adaptive lasso to select further uh, select the important features and finally uh, i applied a non uh, non uh, penalty lasso to select the most important features of from this uh, individual regions uh, so so it's essentially some machine learning tools that's what you're yeah. applying and yeah. some regression yes. okay thank you and so the next uh, sector segment i'm going to talk about is like the bri investment and land acquisition data so here are three snapshots of the bri investment uh, of, of china over in time so this is 2013 data 2016 data 2019 data in 2013 uh, initially we saw that uh, investment was mainly concentrated in african regions like ethiopia nigeria etc however towards the middle the concentration shifted to south asia like uh, pakistan uh, bangladesh malaysia so pakistan was at the top of the bi investment in uh, for three consecutive years and uh, later uh, during the recent years uh, the concentration has shifted to southeast asian countries like indonesia vietnam etc and the next one we uh, saw is a land acquisition data so this is a bar plot for the land acquisition by countries so this plot shows that china, countries like china us and canada have most land acquired to, uh, around the world and um, this is the top uh, 10 countries and um, the this is a, and we also have a similar thing for the target country so here we see that countries like peru is the target uh, or russia or congo they are the top targets of land acquired in the world and uh, we you can also see which countries are uh, uh, acquiring lands in peru the next one we have the parent country heap of land acquisition so for this this one shows that uh, for, for one particular country how uh, which areas they have acquired land around the world so for example in china we see that they they have uh, land acquired in many parts of south, south africa so uh, we saw earlier that the southern african countries have their perception based uh, bias towards china so here also we see that uh, this uh, china has many land acquired in the southern african countries while well, uh, there in northern african countries so there is some uh, corresponding relation between public perception and land acquisition as well and similarly you can see the corresponding land acquired for other countries so the next one is the we did was the time series analysis of the export import from china so there uh, we uh, wondered that uh, whether some economic factors like export and import from china might also be essential for uh, uh, essential factors for behind their influence so here are the term time series that we uh, saw uh, obtained from the time series of export from china so uh, we 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 is uh, observed that uh, the export import time series they have different structures so we applied some clustering techniques to uh, divide this time series in three regions so as you can see for the first cluster there the time series is more or less continuously increasing in the second there is a small dip before increasing again and in the third there is a large dip before they, they increase again and uh, here is a uh, corresponding world map uh, colored based on these three clusters so any question here yeah, just a quick question. So when you look at the pattern, uh, I do not think all the countries can be, for example, in category two, you have US as well as Brazil, Australia, and some countries in Africa. So oh, what do you make out of that? What is the clustering really saying? So th this clustering uh, specifically uh, shows like how the uh, export from China is progresses over time, not basically the exact amount of the export of China. So uh, by uh, uh, USA and Brazil being at the same cluster means their uh, export relationship with China is uh, at the similar trend over time. So uh, the earlier trend, sorry, the earlier trend uh, I showed is that the time series trend that uh, the class two means that there is a small dip and then there is an increase. So both USA and Brazil shows a similar trend in export from China. Uh, you know, when they are clustered in cluster. Okay, thank you. So this, these are uh, all the main major things that I wanted to cover today. So some future works uh, will involve uh, modeling or uh, defining an influence score. So modeling will involve uh, like uh, fitting a VAR with penalty model using different features that will show us which uh, features are more important in uh, predicting the uh, uh, future, uh, say, export import, uh, future export import or say future migration, etc. Another uh, work that might be done is defining an influence score that will give us an idea about, uh, quantify an idea about the influence of a country over another country. Uh, so, yeah, so that is all I have for today. Thank you. Any other questions?